because you have served as a speechwriter to President George H. W. Bush. Now, these are the things that I've only seen on Netflix, right? And how yeah. things like that. So this may sound very elementary, but I'd love to know what the entire process of being a speechwriter to a president is. Do you conceptualize and then write down your thoughts or does the president tell you to do uh, 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 what to write on and how does this work? Well, every administration does it a little differently. Every president does it a little differently. Um, and then even within each administration, you know, each speech is done a little differently. Um, the pure number of them uh, make, you know, kind of individual deliberation with the leader of the free world, you know, not likely or, um, or you know, there's not the time for it. Uh, but bigger ones, you know, State of the Unions are uh, in, in the United States enormously important um, uh, presentations, and um, and then and then you and periodically, you know, other major addresses, convention addresses, obviously uh, things of that nature. It's a highly, to be honest, it's it's a high level function that is also a very unusual function. Meaning it's not something I would ever envision uh, identifying someone in high school or college and saying, you ought to aspire to be a speechwriter. It's usually, uh, as was the case with me, an individual who develops a range of skills, because that's really what it requires. And that, that, that's why, frankly, I think there's so few of them, and even of those that are out there, so few that are really exceptionally good at it. There's a lot of mediocrity in it but you have to understand public policy and the right. issues for starters I mean you can't learn that on the job you need to really understand in almost granular detail everything I mean this is not like you're you know just dealing with say South Asia or you know an issue like that you're you're dealing with every conceivable domestic social and uh, national security foreign affairs issue and then you also got real, and then of course the writing skills are ones that, um, frankly, I think, at least in the United States, so I think it's pretty true globally, used to be a lot more developed um, than they are among this current generation. Um, right. I'm, I'm amazed how many, you know, the PhD thesis or whatever I'll read, and it's just almost unreadable, you know, and and, and right. professors who can't write and. Uh, writing is kind of a lost art, so that's important. And then you got to finally realize you're not really writing for yourself, right? You're you're giving voice to someone else. So if I were doing something, you know, that you were going to address, uh, how I would actually approach it is a little bit interesting. But knowing what your comfort level is and working with that or tweaking it, but you know, making it in a way that 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 brings out the best in your ability to resonate with an audience um, and communicate what your uh, you need to, your objectives are is what's really crucially important. And then when you consider the political dimension of this, because of course just private sector corporate speech writers, Fortune one thousand companies typically have them. Um, and other and other uh, capats, Hollywood, you know, um, <laughs> these uh, the Golden Globes and and the and uh, the Oscars, speechwriters galore. Those are that's a very lucrative gig that I have not cracked. It's yes. usually used by Democrats, I think. But in you know in um, you know in in government, then also it's consensus, you know, kind of within an administration because you know even like in the administration I worked with, which is pretty. I, pretty common to varying degrees. Not everybody's on the same page about what the message should be, but everybody, at least on a cabinet level, has got a viewpoint about what it should be, right? They right. view that as kind of what they're paid to do. Uh, you know, many times you'll have conflicting sentiments and, um, and, and then that represents a challenge. Um, right. So um, it's one of uh, the, the good news is when you do it at, at, at the highest level, which is writing for the president of the United States, you have so many resources right. at your disposal. I mean, there was no one I couldn't get on the phone uh, to get insight or um, the guidance from if I needed to. I can remember doing uh, July 
uh, Ford's TV speech for Disney and is getting on, you know, kind of at the highest levels with Disney, you know, executives in a second, you know, where they like came out of meetings to take your call and things like that. So you have that advantage that people are responsive when the White House calls. <laughs> Right. Good experience, though. It's something I would recommend uh, anyone. I'm, I'm, I'm uh -huh. sure Modi has some good people working with him, I would imagine. Please remember to subscribe to us and switch on the notifications for this channel. For our other social media links, more content and to support our work, please visit citti.net. Dhanavad. Namaskar.